Hello, everybody. All right. Right now we're going to go over uh, part three of our origins of rock and roll. Um, and that is country music. Yay. I always have people that come into this class that go, are we going to do country? And I get to say yes for one magical day. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Um, okay. So here we go. Country music originated in the southern U.S. and is thought to be a hybrid of folk and western music. The term country was used because it was preferable to its earlier name, hillbilly music. And the only person I've ever heard call country music hillbilly music was my grandfather, who just passed away this April. He was 97, and he would sometimes refer to uh, music as hillbilly music, and he's the only person I've ever met that, that did that. So um, he's from that older generation for sure. Um, country music was slightly more progressive than folk or bluegrass, incorporating electric instruments. This music was heavily influenced by white Americans. So um, the thing with electric instruments is important because folk music and bluegrass, they, they treasure simplicity. Um, to a lot of folk musicians, if you use any instrument that is an electric instrument, you're like a sellout, right? You're not doing it the way it's supposed to be done, according to them. Uh, folk and bluegrass is supposed to be the music of the front porch of Appalachia. Music you can create on your porch, in your yard, with your neighbors, with your family. Music that has this organic family feel. To them, if you're plugging in an electric guitar to a giant amp and going, wow, then you have sold out. Country, while it treasured the, the bluegrass, the folk, the western, it also was okay with using different sounds, and sometimes that included an electric guitar or an electric something, you know, or, or using a microphone, you know. Um, so that's one of the biggest differences between country and folk or bluegrass. Um, bluegrass is a subgenre. A subgenre is like a genre within a genre. So like you could have, you could have punk, and then you could have like pop punk, or you could have metal, and then have like speed metal or heavy metal or like Norwegian metal, right? A subgenre is like a, a subsect of a genre. So bluegrass is a subgenre of country music inspired by the music of Appalachia. That's where we live. Yay, up in the mountains. Although we're not really in the mountains, we're in the hills. But if you go over into West Virginia, I'm sure you've all seen those mountains. That's some Appalachia right there. Um, yeah, one sec, yeah. Um, so it leans more toward, um, bluegrass leans more toward folk than true country. It's more simplistic. Um, it has its roots in Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and English. So a lot of these immigrants that came over from these countries that settled in the mountains. Um, have y'all ever heard someone say wash when they talk about wash, right? That is, that is a little piece of old Irish, Scottish, Welsh language that Originate, that originated over in that, that Gaelic language that when it came to the hills of Appalachia became um, like part of the accent, you know? And the music kind of is the same. Language and music can often be very linked. Um, so the music has those Irish, Welsh, Scottish traditions and some of the accent that you might think of in this area. And if you're from this area and your family's from this area, you might think, well, I don't have an accent. But then you go to like Florida or California or Montana or like a state that's farther away and you go, oh, these people talk a little differently. And you realize like, oh, no matter where you're from in the United States, you have a little bit of an accent. And it all depends on your family, where you're from, where your family's from, all these different things that compile our music and how we speak. It's pretty fascinating when you think about it. Um, anyway, I'm getting on a bit of a tangent here. Um, so this music would also later be influenced by the music of African Americans through jazz elements, but that would come a little later. Um, folk music is the music of the people. It varies by region, much like we talked about with the blues, like you have your Chicago blues and your Delta blues and all these different things. Folk music is very much in pockets too, because keep in mind, we're talking about a time when people didn't travel very often, or um, if you lived in an area and your family was there, and you had, you know, food and stuff, people didn't frequently move as much as they do nowadays, that it's easier. Um, so the music and the language would kind of be in these little pockets. Um, so 
Folk music also tends to tell stories, and it's very simple in its structure, its composition, and its instrumentation. Um, some of the best folk music tells stories that need to be told. Um, as we'll get into later in this class, we talk about Woody Guthrie, who's one of the most famous folk musicians to ever live, and he used his music to tell the stories of people whose stories might not be told. The pe poor people, the people of the back hills that maybe didn't get the recognition. Woody Guthrie would tell their stories through song and get their message out. Um, folk and bluegrass are very closely linked, but bluegrass tends to have more of that country feel, that Western feel. Folk tends to be a little more, um, a little less twangy, you know, um, a little more straight ahead in that regard. Bluegrass tends to have more of that, mm, well, we'll listen to some examples and you'll, you'll be able to hear it. It's, it's a little more on the country side than folk is. All right, so country music often used banjo, which we don't really see so much in the blues. That was more guitar. Um, banjo, fiddle, not so much in the blues also. This is much more of a country, a country thing. Uh, acoustic guitar, mandolin. Hopefully you all have seen mandolin. If not, we'll watch some video. Oh, there's a mandolin right there in this picture being held by Bill Monroe. There you go. Uh, the bass, the big stand-up bass, and sometimes household objects um, like washboards, jugs, hoo -hoo, spoons. Um, and oftentimes you used what you had. You know, if you're in the back hills of West Virginia or southeastern Ohio, you can't just run out to the music store always and buy an instrument. Sometimes you had to make do with what you had. What'd you have on hand? Washboards, jugs, spoons, right? If you're lucky, you had an actual instrument. Um, so these sounds kind of became part of this tradition and this culture of country music. Uh, coal mining and railroad themes are often seen in early country music. Um, but nowadays, when you listen to modern country, the themes often are more relevant to what people are doing now. So like, I've heard a lot of country songs that sing about like pickup trucks, for instance, right? Obviously back in the day, if they didn't have, you know, cars or whatever back then, you wouldn't be singing about a pickup truck, you might be singing about working in a coal mine or a railroad, a train, right? But as music evolves and culture evolves, we get these, um, these themes that evolve also. So we start singing about, you know, pickup trucks or whatever it is, you know, dating or whatever, okay? So music reflects people. That's the biggest thing about this whole origins of rock. It reflects the people. Um, and coal mining and railroad were two huge, um, not just sources of income, but like ways of life for so many people. So that worked its way into the music. Um, in country music, as I mentioned up above, it was more accepted to use electric instruments, guitars, amplifiers. In folk and bluegrass, this was not the case, and the music took pride in being simple. One of the earliest recordings of a country song is Vernon Dahlhardt's Wreck of the Old 97, which dates back to 1924. So that's almost 100 years old that that recording was made. And that is thought by many uh, musicologists to be the first country song recorded. Okay. Um, so... Again, it's a song about the old 97. It's a literal story song about a railroad that went off of a bridge. And I think it killed a lot of people. I don't know the details of that story. I just know it's a story about a train called the old 97. Um, and Vernon Dahlhart wrote it, recorded it, and it became a big hit. This is him right here. There you go. Okay, so below here we have our who dats, okay? And um, to identify these artists, you're going to have to go to the Google site, just like you did before. Hopefully you have it bookmarked. It's on the plan week two, if you, or week three, I'm sorry, the plan week three, if you need it. Pull that up in another tab, and in a Google Doc shared with me, you're going to type out, and you can go just in order here. Just go from left to right, Vernon Dahlhart, the Carter family, etc., and just list who these different people are, okay? Um, down here, we have our vocabulary country music, bluegrass, folk music, coal mining and railroad themes, and the early, earliest recording of a country song. So list all those, please, in your Google Doc. And then we have our listening jots. I tried to put the songs in chronological order. Some of these songs are later country songs, and that's because we might not revisit it. So I wanted to make sure we covered some of the classic older country. Um, so we range all the way from... Ooh, my thing's frozen. Ah, 
We range all the way from Vernon Dahlhart's first song, The Wreck of the Old 97, in 1924, all the way to Loretta Lynn singing Coal Miner's Daughter in 1970. So it's kind of a wide span in there, about 50 years. And obviously, country is still going today. It's just evolved a lot. But um, this is the music that inspired that music. So it's important to know where it came from. All right. So again, you'll pull up Spotify. You'll listen to all of these songs. You'll make jots about what you hear, kind of tying in the lesson and what you read. Don't just put, it was good or it was bad. Put, oh, I heard mandolin or I heard banjo or I heard um, a story about railroads. I heard a story about coal mining or well, I heard a song about um, my grandpappy who made moonshine in the back hills, right? Like put what you hear that ties into this story of Appalachian music and country music. Okay. All right. And make sure you share that with me in the same doc as spirit or as um oh my gosh as tin pan alley so tin pan alley and country are together same doc and i'm pretty sure i'm going to notate in there that i want them on the same doc as spirituals and blues that way you have one set of notes for all of the origins i hope that makes sense so spirituals blues tin pan alley country, and then next week we're doing rhythm and blues, and you're going to have all five of those origins on the same Google Doc. The same Google Doc, and you share it with me, and that way to grade, all I have to do is scroll down. It's already done, okay? I know it's been confusing for some of you because the assignments are not on the classwork tab, but that's because I didn't want you to have to turn them in and then make a new one. I wanted it to be all together. All right, hope y'all are doing well. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.